what's good youtube and returning life gainers everything you ever want to know about investing or making money in cryptocurrency you're going to learn today i have the crypto zealot who's made hundreds and thousands of dollars in the crypto industry here to do an interview to tell you everything you need to know and i want you guys to be informed if you're going to get into this crypto market because as you can see it goes up and that airplane comes down if you enjoy the content on this channel go ahead and subscribe click that notification bell so that you can be down with the life gain squad every time i drop a new video let's get into crypto investing and all things crypto what's good youtube all knowing all loving all feeling all seeing all powerful just damn all everything the sexy as hell host of the life games channel joining me today for the first interview and y'all can just call me the male oprah just i'm the skinny version of the male oprah and joining me in the sexy as hell recording studio is my first interview of 2018 this man calls himself the crypto zealot everything you need to know about investing in cryptocurrencies the background of cryptocurrencies he's done it he's made money and he's going to tell you about it Mr. Zeller. Thank you very much. Thank Welcome much. to the Sexy as Hell Studios. Thank you. Good to be here. So my first question to you is, when did you get involved in the cryptos and what brought you to wanting to get involved in cryptos? Getting involved in cryptos. Uh, had some extra cash. Mm -hmm. Was talking to a, a client that do web design development as well. And talking to a client, client got me on to talk about Steam and EOS and how EOS coin is going to change the... Uh, change how applications were built, how they were hosted, and all this kind of stuff. So I started looking at that. And then my developer that was working on the website actually knew a little bit about Bitcoin as well. So I started talking to him. He got me on to the local website, localbitcoins.com, where you could buy and sell coins. Right. So I bought a couple coins, realized that I could actually turn that into a business by buying coins and selling coins at localbitcoins.com. And then uh, from there, it's just grown from selling it every single day to now I'm looking at what coins are coming out, which ones are doing good, which mm -hmm. ones are real coins, which ones are fake coins, what's the crap, and avoid those and focus on the good ones and try to invest in those early. So you get in those early now instead of the day trading stuff, instead of running around circles every day selling Bitcoin, now I'm just sitting back and saying, okay, these five coins are coming out, these two look pretty good, let me buy some of those coins and write it out for six months or a year and see what happens. Uh -huh. Hey, you've done good in it so far. Yeah. So, you know, I have a base of people that love saving money. They love making money. And I try to make sure I filter the bullshit from them so they don't get taken advantage of. So some of the questions I hear often when we're talking about cryptocurrencies, and I've got a list of them. We're going to go through them. Number one, why should people support cryptocurrency without it being regulated by anybody's government or bank? Uh, why should we support without regulation or without without a uh, central regulation I guess right right mainly like one example is you know you don't want one controlling entity to control anything like if you have just the government controls the printing of money they can just continually print it like they do now and just print it month after month after month and we have no say in it at all and the dollar value just goes down or up depending on what they do mm -hmm. if the bank doesn't want your bank account open for whatever reason which they did to me they just closed my bank account down and didn't tell me why. I said, you have too many transactions. We're closing your bank account down. And I had to wait two or three weeks to get my money back. Damn. Damn. So and that was because I was selling Bitcoin. They didn't like it. Oh. So I, I don't know, maybe it was, I might be speculating there, but it's, they didn't like the amount of money I had coming into my bank every single day in cash deposits, mm -hmm. which they maybe thought was money laundering as well. So that's also the thing they're looking at. But I told my business plan and, and they let me do it and then they just shut me down. So, mm. so in other examples, let's say you're sending food overseas and mm -hmm. you're using cryptocurrencies to track the food. Right. So you can send the food over there and everything's in the ledger so the food can get there. The problem right now is you can send food overseas to Africa or whatever. When it gets there, nobody knows what happens to it. It probably goes somewhere else. Right. They don't get right. the food. If you send money over there, they never get the money. It goes somewhere else. With cryptocurrencies and tracking, you can send funds to them and using the ledgering system, you can see exactly where it goes, when it got there, what happened to it after it got there, did it make it where it's supposed to make it to, when it didn't make it, where did it get cut off at? Well, let's go to this guy right here. This is the guy that got the money. This guy's got the food. Right. So that's a great use of it. And that's okay. decentralized. Having that all the central authority, 
it gets there and one entity is in control at all and if they're like hey we passed it out we're like oh yeah great you passed it out we don't know if you passed it out or not right, right. so that's a good example of it okay and one thing that he kind of hit on that we're doing another video the technology behind cryptocurrency blockchaining that's one way that you keep it from being centralized by one body and i'll do another video on that um i just want this to be a general video for those novices getting into the crypto world and want real good information so number two question i get a lot on my channel besides investing in cryptos what else can people do to make money in this industry uh well you can like i said you can invest in them and sit on and wait you can do the day trading like people do with uh, international currency and stocks and anything else out there. You can trade them, watch the market when they go down, you buy, when it goes up 10%, 3%, you sell and do that several times per day. Mm -hmm. Or you can do what I was doing, what I alluded to earlier, is you can buy coins in cash on the market or you can buy them at a local or not. You can buy them at popular websites like coinbase.com. Mm -hmm get the coins that way, send them over to an account called local Bitcoin or on your account at localbitcoins.com. Okay. Once they're there, you can actually take those coins and put them on the market for sale to people who are shopping on localbitcoins.com and you mark it up. So you can mark it up to people oh. buying locally in cash. Mm. You can meet them at a coffee shop and you can sell it to them for cash. You can mark it up. I've gone as high as 15%. Damn. So I've gone anywhere from maybe eight to 15% markup on the coin on that day's value. And they're just buying fractions. They're not buying a whole coin. They might okay. buy 0 0.03 coins or 0.55 coins. Mm -hmm. So as long as I have that many coins in my account, they can meet me. I can sell it to them. They can send you money online through Western Union. So you just set up your ad. Like, hey, I want to do, I'm going to sell coins for Western Union. And you set up your account and they say, hey, I'll buy coins for me for Western Union. I'll pay that 7% or 8, 10% service fee that you want to charge. Right. And you get the money sent to it. Mm -hmm. So then that's a way, I mean, if you're, the more you can sell per day, you do the math. If you can sell four thousand dollars per day and make a ten percent profit, you're making four hundred dollars a day. Hey, and you know we like making them kind of life gains. The downside of that is, you know, I just told my wife this this morning, is it's you're running around in circles a lot. You're selling out your coin, but then you got to buy new coins. So then you got to put it back into Coinbase, and you got to wait the two weeks to get it back in. Right. Or you can go online in local bitcoins or other sites, and you could actually buy again from somebody else. You pay them cash as well, but you try to buy it lower. So you find somebody who has selling it for maybe three or 4% over, and you can turn around and flip it for nine to 10 to 11% over. And there's people who are willing to pay that because it just seems like if you're in the United States, there's a more of a trust factor. And if you're local, there's even a more of a trust factor. But the more a trust factor, the higher the rate of the sale goes up. Okay. So if I'm buying sometimes, I might be sending money down to South America. I don't know if I'm gonna get screwed or not, right. but everything's in an escrow, so I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be okay. But there's always that chance that there could be an issue where you're not gonna be paid for a couple of days. I'll take that chance. Some people aren't taking that chance. They'll buy it for me knowing I'm here in the United States and they're going to get the money from me pretty quickly. Okay. For the coins. Gotcha. Well, that's an idea if someone wants to do that. Question number three. How are you able to move funds without bank or government prying eyes? Ooh. Hmm. Scary. Yeah. Now, by saying that, we don't endorse any criminal activity. It's just the way cryptos do, you can move in different pathways from what you used to could do with ordinary traditional money. And we also uh, are not promoting any kind of legal advice at all. This is purely for what's my knowledge, what's his knowledge, and yep. we're, we're just kind of like ideas in our head and things that we're doing right now. But, uh, so go back to that one question. What the question was, how are you able to move funds without uh, banking uh, government knowing or watching what you're doing? That's pretty hard, I mean, especially if the most popular site out there right now is coinbase.com, right. it's the easiest one for most people to use, and mm -hmm. it's an American company, so people trust it. So you put your money in there, and they're, I mean, they're, they already have a big ad on their site that says make sure you're reporting to IRS. Right. So make sure you're reporting every profit you make in there to IRS. But outside of that, like once you get your money in there, that's just one way of getting it in. There's other there's other exchanges out there outside of Coinbase. The, the company that owns them or they own the other company, it's called GDAX, oh, which is their yeah. sister company. Mm -hmm. And GDAX is just a little more harder to use, a little more of a nerdy interface. It's more for the techie people. Coinbase is more polished and it's for the end users who don't really know what they're doing that well. Mm -hmm. But you get your money in there through one of those exchanges and those are tracks of so government and everybody can see everything that's going on. If you go through a service similar to local bitcoins, you can kind of have an account there that's anonymous. You can create an account, mm -hmm. you're using an email address, you give them a name, but really, I mean, outside of that, you can really not even give them a phone number. You don't have to show them an ID, you don't have to show them anything. 
Okay. So you can set up that way and you can buy and sell and do our exchanging right there on that site and really keep yourself off the radar completely. Mm -hmm. When you want to cash out, the same thing. You go back online and you, you sell and cash out right there online. So it, it, you're keeping everything off the radar right now. Right. At some point, I mean, you there's there's wallet addresses for all the coins. So and if somebody's under investigation or somebody's being looked at, the FBI or CIA, whoever's looking at this stuff, they're going to be able to pinpoint this guy's wallet address is this. Mm. But for all intents and purposes, it's just an address. And people can see coins going in and out of that address and, and all that kind of stuff. But they don't know who, who wants that address. But they gotcha. can pinpoint it to you eventually if they really want to do an investigation. But okay. for the most part, you can buy your coins on Coinbase, other exchanges, move in local Bitcoins, sell them on there. You're keeping off the radar kind of at that degree, but you still should be keeping track of all the, the money you're making for the tax purposes because they are going to come after you at some point. Yeah, man. And maybe it might be two years from now, it might be three years from now, but they're going to start going on localbitcoins.com door and knocking on it and saying, right. who are these people who are collecting all this money the last mm -hmm. three years? We want to know who they are. Right. <laughs> so. There's only one person that has seemed to be able to get away with all kinds of money and not paying money in taxes, and that is the current president of these United States <laughs> of America. Wesley Stipes tried, but he yeah. didn't get it either. Yeah, <laughs> you know the black dude ain't gonna get away with it. <laughs> Going after him. Yeah. The next question, who currently accepts crypto as payments in the United States? Are you aware of any companies mm -hmm. that accept it as payment? Uh, I thought Amazon was, but I was wrong, but they are looking into it. Mm -hmm. um, so Amazon's one's looking into it. I know that 800flowers.com is a site they can go to. Okay. But uh, I, it's always the, uh, the underground market that people buy stuff with. But aside from that, I've seen the McDonald's is starting to accept it in some places. Yeah, yeah. KFC had a promotional thing for a $20 Bitcoin bucket. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's, there's a website you go to, I can't recall off the top of my head, the site you can go to and you can just put in there like who's accepting Bitcoin. There's a, there's a huge list of like Fortune 100 companies or 1,000 companies are taking Bitcoin nowadays. Wow, wow. Oh yeah, Craigslist is one. You can go on Craigslist. Okay. You can list up in Craigslist to buy and sell. I listed an Apple computer for sale on there and somebody bought it. And it's cute because when they replied to me, like, we're only using like cold hard dollars, something like that, no cryptocurrencies here, or something like that. Because I had to advertise, like, hey, give me Bitcoin or I'll take any kind of coin you have, not just Bitcoin, any coin. Right. So, but yeah, nobody's bought it for that. But it's out there, though, it's available. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I will link that website in the video description in case someone wants to see the website to see who is accepting cryptocurrencies. That's something you want to do. Um, next question would be Do you ever see governments across the nation? Um, accepting cryptocurrency or supporting cryptocurrencies? Yes, there's uh, actually, I mean, today in the last couple of weeks has been kind of a bloodbath in the market of up and down. And a lot of that is because of, of fear of some countries who are not really embracing it, like South Korea. South Korea's like on the defense a lot, it seems like, and they keep saying things that are um, detrimental to the market and it causes the crash. Right. And then uh, you'll look at like uh, Japan, and Japan's totally loving it, embracing it. They got banks popping up in Japan that are cryptocurrency friendly banks. Really? They've got uh, um, Sweden or uh, I think it was Sweden, Norway. I don't know one of those countries over there. They're they're on their own uh, their own car coin called the E Karma. Mm -hmm. No E. I think I'm quote me. I got written down somewhere. But uh, they're doing their own coin that's uh, going to let people. That, and they were the ones that's really pushing to go cashless. So. They're one of the biggest countries in the world that's pushing a cashless society. Okay. So they are really heavy into that. Venezuela's doing the one where they're trying to launch a Bitcoin, or a, Venezuela's trying to launch a coin that's based off of the coin supposed to be valued at the barrel of a, a, a oil. Oh, good lord. Yeah, like some people think that's a scam down there. Some of the country thinks it's a scam. Some people think it's actually a legit thing. My view, I'm kind of viewing it as they're anti-capitalist, and the capitalist countries do not want anti-capitalist countries to succeed. So therefore, they make it there, so that they won't succeed. And then they be in the news, like, oh, look at Venezuela's not succeeding because they're not capitalist. Mm. Yeah, because you strangled them, they probably would have succeeded, but they're not. So Venezuela's doing one, Japan's really embracing it. United States, I've heard mixed reviews. There's the Federal Reserve chairman in St. Louis, who has, or yeah, St. Louis, who has said that he believes that it's necessary, it's coming, and we should embrace it. Mm -hmm. But then about other people, like uh, stupid Jamie Dimon at uh, <laughs> Citibank, whatever it is, or wherever the guy works at, how it's the worst thing in the world, he'll fire anybody who works there. <laughs> then he turns around and says it could go to $100,000, and then he apologized for it. Well, so, I mean, what do you expect from the big banks? Yeah, you know, yeah. You're taking power away from them. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't expect them to say anything 
less than bad things about something that could eventually defang their teeth and their power with the government. And people like him, who's probably saying that and turn around the back end, buying up hundreds of thousands of coins as soon as it crashed when he said it, right. and then it goes right back up two days later. Exactly. So you know how that goes. And actually, South Korea, they actually got in trouble for that when they mentioned a couple of days ago that they might be cracking down on Bitcoin. All of a sudden, it crashed. And then all of a sudden, those guys are under investigation for insider trading, and now they're getting fired. Wow. It's like, and then, I don't want to have a lot of regulation, but you, there's got to be some kind of regulation in here. It sucks, but it, it has to be something. Something to make sure people aren't cheating. Yeah, like right now, Wall Street can come in right now and easily, which they probably are, manipulating the market every single day just by pumping millions. The whales can come in from Wall Street and just pump millions into something and watch the noobs, the newbie out there, out there just trying to make some money. Mm -hmm. Just they pump it in, the noobs buy it when it gets up here, and the whales are like laughing and they sell it all, and the noobs just sit there and just crashes. They don't know when to sell. Right. So that could be happening, and it probably is happening now, but. It's scary unless you know what you're doing. That's why I'm staying out of day trading. I don't want to get into it. It's, it's very scary. You can lose a lot of money real yeah. quick. And people ain't trying to do that. Bro. No, no. People ain't trying to looking. do that. So um, where are the two best places that a novice can buy cryptocurrency? Mm. Well, if you're a novice, I would say go to Coinbase.com. Mm -hmm. Sign up there. Create your account. You can tie in um, your, your major account into Coinbase. So you just log on. And you say, hey, I want to transfer $3,000 from my Wells Fargo account, move it over to Coinbase. That takes sometimes four or five days. It's ridiculous. Right. Then once it gets there, you can say, oh, now I have my money in my Coinbase account. I want to buy Bitcoin. Ah, huh, guess what? You got to wait another three or four days for that to happen. Good Lord. It's crazy. Yeah. But I have not used GDAX yet, but I'm assuming it's probably a little faster. There's also a site out there called Kraken, K-R-A-K-E-N.com. Mm -hmm. And that's a good one. You can tie that into your bank account as well. Okay. And otherwise, like you could also on Coinbase, you can also tie your credit card in. So you can just put your Visa right into it. And they have limits. You can maybe get a $500, $750, maybe a $1,000 limit per week on your Visa transactions. But then on the um, the bank transactions, you can get up to like five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 per week kind of transactions in that way. Mm. But uh, aside from those... That's the easiest way to get it in. And then, then you go to like localbitcoins.com, you go on there and get an account, go find somebody local, meet with them, pay cash, pay more, but it's a good, sweet transaction because it's local, it's off the books. And that's where you come in because you can help people in that manner that live in this local area. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll meet people like at, at 7, 8 o'clock at night at a coffee shop and sell $3,000 so, for Bitcoin. Well, how can someone that's watching this that lives in California, how can they find someone that's doing local Bitcoin or whatever, the way you do it? Just go to the local Bitcoin or localbitcoins.com, which you'll have a link to it. So, yep. But uh, go there and just it, right in a, as you scroll down the page, you'll see a section that says like shop local. Okay. You know, buy local. There should be a list like, because it's based on your IP address, so it knows where you are and you load it, go to the site. So if you're in San Jose, California, it's like, there's six people in San Jose selling Bitcoin. So okay. you just look at their ratings. They'll have ratings on there of how many sales you've had. They'll have uh, like a social media, like people can vote you up and down. So you have trustworthiness. So you can look for people up with high ratings and a lot of sales. And those are the people usually a little more trustworthy. Okay. And then you go meet with them or you can buy it online if you'd like. So wow. with you. That's a good deal. We got two questions left. Then we'll get him out of here. We'll get you guys out of here. And hopefully you'll be more informed if you decide that you want to throw some money at the cryptocurrency market. So as of right now, we've seen the volatility with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You know, one point in time it was $21,000. I think last week it got down to 10,000 and under 10,000. So I would want to ask you, without having to invest in the big three, which would be um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum, what would you say are the two best cryptos to invest in? It's always a loaded question. Uh, it fluctuates so much every day. There's, if you're looking at it from a stability standpoint and, and a coin that you have a lot of faith in that's going to make a lot of waves, mm -hmm. and there's one called the EOS, EOS coin. Right. And to me, that's, it's gonna be huge. I mean, it's just, it's, it's decentralized apps where you can host an entire website on these decentralized apps using blockchain technology. And there's no longer a, central website hosting service anymore. Now it's the blocks of data that is just spread across everybody's computers and when the site loads, it just pulls this data in and loads it lightning fast. But that's just an example of one of the things EOS can do. It's just everything's decentralized. And their stock seems to, not stock, I always call it stock. 
their coin always seems to just really do well. It, I mean, I, I, don't know, was, I bought a bunch of it at 50 cents just six months ago, maybe less than a year ago, and it's already, it went up to $18 a coin. Good Lord, and have it, mercy. It, it maintains. Like every, and you held today, on to it all that time? Yeah, I just hold on to it. I'm waiting until it goes like 100 <laughs> so. I mean, but that's still good money. You went from 50 cents to $18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, if you bought 100 of those, just hell, that's the price. That's the price Pepsi Cola was when I was 10 years old, yeah. 50 cent. <laughs> you know, and if you bought like, you know, 50 of them, you're sitting good right now. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to buy some more. Um, but today I'm looking at the market and it's another bloodbath today. It's crashing, but EOS is up 13%. It's It just stays up. So no matter what's going on, it seems to have like battle gear on. And it's just getting started. Like it hasn't even had a proof of concept yet. It's just all based on the concept. It's not even embraced with anybody yet. So that EOS is a good one. One that I really like that's interesting is for the creative industry, it's called POET. It's P-O.E-T, or P-O.E-T is the website you go to. But it's proof of existence. And it's for copywriters, journalists, creative people who create content, video, anything really. And when you create it, you can attach your code to it, to the coin that says, I created this, this is when I created it, here's my contract, anybody who wants to use this, and share it with anywhere. Here's how you do it, and you send it out there. And if somebody down the line tries to steal that song and use it later on, saying, "Nah, they're just a small time guy," you're like, "Nope. Here's my contract on the blockchain on Poet, and people exchange it, and you get your money that way." So you kind of take a lot of the big picture guys, all the record producers, out of the scene. Mm. And now it's like you create it, you put it out there, and you start getting money generated in the Po or Poet. But then when you get to Poet, you didn't take it and convert it, convert it back into Bitcoin, so you can cash it out. Wow. So, it's interesting. That was one thing we need to talk about. Is yeah, that's interesting. Getting the coin and then converting it into something else. So let's say you have Bitcoin, but you do want to buy some Poet. Like, man, I want to buy a thousand Poet coins. I don't know where to go. Well, if you go to like CoinMarketCap.com mm -hmm. and you go there and you click on the coin you're interested in, it it has a link to the um, the exchange, the place that sells that coin. So you click that, and you go to that website where you can buy that coin. You create an account. And then you move your Bitcoin or Ethereum into your account there, and that gives you money to buy other coins now. So once you're in that exchange, let's say you have an account at uh, Binance, right. Binance.com. Mm -hmm. So you're at Binance.com, and you, you move your, your Ethereum or your Bitcoin into that account. And then from there, you have access to over 200 different other coins. Okay. And you can buy Ripple, which is really hot in the news. Even though it's not really a cryptocurrency coin, it's really hot in the news, and it's going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So Ripple is, is in there. You can buy um, Ethereum. You can buy the Binance coin itself. And if you buy the Binance coin itself, every time you buy any other coin, it cuts your transaction fees in half. Because there's always a fee to buy and sell coins. Mm -hmm. But having a Binance coin in your wallet on Binance.com allows you to cut that transaction fee in half, which for, right now is only like 0.1. So you can, like, it's like 0.05%. So that's, really how you, that's how you avoid some of those Coinbase fees and all that, just get you some Binance. And yeah, yeah. That's how you can money. circumvent. And the coin goes up and down. So if you buy, like I bought some today at $8 a coin, and today it was at 12 something. The other day it was at 15. So if, as long as you hold on to it, the more it goes up, I mean, you have a coin that's saving you money on your transactions, and it's making you money at the same time right. as it goes up. So over time. Hmm. Wow. But yeah, so Poet is a good one to look at. Mm -hmm. And the other one I, I like is it just came out. It's not even, it's barely on the exchanges. It's called... Tau, T-A-U is the coin, and it's from a company called Lambden. Okay. And they're building this infrastructure where they're making it so easy for you to just, as a, as a um, corporation, so a, a big a big corporation, they, they want to do it during the shipping industry. So you go onto this Lambden and you can say, they've got all these apps, you I want the shipping app. Okay, mm -hmm. here's all the shipping apps, I want this one. Boom, you download it into your, your app store, you start using it, it's like, well I need some contracts for my shipping and shippers and stuff. Boop, here's all the contracts that we have, the smart contracts built into the Ethereum network. Which one do you want? You take, you edit it for your needs, you stick it out there, and now you've got your contracts, you get your whole shipping interface for you, and then you've got the whole um, e-commerce part of it. Everybody's got to get paid. So they've got all this stuff built into the suite where Flora, I think is the coin, I'm not exactly sure, but the transactions go back and forth with cryptocurrency coin to each other, so it's all lightning fast and nobody's involved, there's no banks involved, there's no attorneys involved, mm. and all the contracts are pre-written and approved by attorneys already. You just edit it and you lock it down. It's amazing. <laughs> wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm a man that know when I don't specialize in something, I go get help. So I'm glad this brother is around. 
And I'm sure a lot of people would love to know, how can they reach out to you on social media? Do you have an app that they can reach out to you to meet you on local, uh, what is it called? Local, local um, Bitcoins. Local Bitcoins in your area. How can people follow you and find you? Uh, I'd say the best way is just that about, go to uh, about.me mm -hmm. slash Tony Chester and okay. access me there. And then uh, there's a links to the resources that I spoke about and they can get a hold of me through there for consultation as well. And I can talk to them on the phone or email or wherever they want to talk. Cool, cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all that good info will be in the video description box. I'm overwhelmed. That's why I say when you want to get in something like this, go find somebody that has the knowledge, you know, yeah. you know, uh, someone that can help you get started into understanding what it is you need to know. So I'm that, trying to learn still. I'm always yeah, learning. So I can start a meetup myself so I can get people to learn from me, but I can learn from them too. Right. So he does also head up a meetup in the Raleigh, Durham, Cary area of North Carolina. If you live in that area and you want to get your knowledge up on um, all things crypto, go hit them up. Um, Tony? Appreciate it, appreciate it. Glad to have you. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it. Be sure to check the video description box for links to him. Other great resources that will help you get going in this crypto world that's not a material girl. And I am not a material man. <laughs> and that's going to do it. And until the next Sexy as Hell video, we'll see you.